The 3DS is a cool handheld. The homebrew scene for the 3DS has been booming recently as well, and I've always wanted to make homebrew games for the 3DS, but I never knew where to start. Are there any game engines out there for the 3DS? What programming languages can I use? Well, it turns out you can make 3DS homebrew with more than just C or C++. Some time ago, Unity actually made an official port of the engine to the 3DS, meaning theoretically, you can easily port any game you made with Unity to the 3DS. In practice though, you need to get into Nintendo's official developer program and sign an NDA, or you can do what most people did and look online for a free version that someone put on archive.org for some reason, but that version is a 10 year old version of Unity and technically illegal to you since you aren't in the Nintendo program. I mean, will Nintendo actually do something if you use this? No, probably not. In fact, I did actually use this some time ago to make a simple game. It's not good. In fact, it's not even really a game since there's really nothing happening here, but still, I guess you could use a 10 year old version of Unity to make 3DS games. So what are the other options? Well, I guess I could use Rust, but uh, okay, what else is there? Well, someone named Dinglemancer made his own game engine called Octave. It's an open source 3D game engine that runs on like every platform under the sun, including the 3DS. It uses Lua for scripting, so in theory, it makes it really easy to make games on a 3DS. The problem? Well, one, at least for this video, I'm not gonna use 3D and Octave doesn't support 2D. The second, much bigger issue is that the documentation isn't that great. And since the 3DS is included in the long list of other supported devices, the people who actually use Octave are most likely there for like the GameCube or the Wii, not really for the 3DS. I think I'll still use Octave one day, but not in this video. The last option is Love Potion, a 2D Lua framework ported to the 3DS. This, from everything I've heard about it, is fantastic. Not only can you easily make 2D games on a 3DS with this, there's really no big issues or problems with it, apart from like Lua performance compared to like other languages. So why didn't I go with this? Well, here in Game Dev Civilization, you can either do the one block jump for the Lua or the one block vertical jump for the C++. And after doing enough one block jumps my whole life, I really wanted to try something new with C++ and be cool and epic, learning about semicolons pointers, STDs. And the big angle here is to not only learn 3DS development, but also have useful C++ knowledge I could then use to make other cool things, or to contribute code to other open source things that I like using. So I first started by watching a 40 minute YouTube video on C++ so I could get familiar with its syntax and things. It was then that I had to decide on what game I would be making on the 3DS. I decided pretty quickly on Pong because it's pretty simple in mechanics and it's something I knew how to make in other languages and game engines, but it's also a game that I could add features to as well, like maybe something on the bottom screen. So I finished watching the video and started a new C++ project. It was then that I immediately ran into my first problem. I already installed DevKit Pro, which is the tool you need if you want to make homebrew for any Nintendo console, 3DS included, but Visual Studio Code doesn't recognize any of its libraries by default. That means no autocomplete, and this red squiggle will just always be there. After an embarrassingly long time of figuring this out, it turns out that VS Code actually includes a file in every project named C, C++ properties.json, and it's here that you have to put all of this in the include path of that file. Now that that was taken care of, I followed a DevKit Pro example to make a quick Hello World project and export it to the 3DS. Everything worked fine, so now it's time for the real challenge to begin. While watching that 40 minute video, I realized that C++ has a thing called classes. It's basically a custom variable type you can make that you can put other variables and functions inside. With this knowledge, I made a class for the paddle and put stuff like its x and y position, and also speed y to change the y position in this function I also put inside the paddle class. I can then, in the main function, make a new variable that is using the new paddle class. Now all I have to do is somehow detect if the user is pressing like the d-pad or circle pad or something, and make the paddle go up and down. This is where I use a devkit pro function to check if there's any buttons being pressed. And if there are, I use more 3ds specific variables to check what button is being pressed. So here, if I'm pressing up, I go down, and if I'm pressing down, I go up. Which, like, okay, there's a very long and complicated reason as to why I'm doing that, but 
Basically, on the 3DS, up means down and down means up, okay? Then I just call the function to update the player's position and bang! Everything works! Well, actually I don't know if it's working or not because I actually haven't put anything on the screen yet. So after a bit of research, I found out two of the best libraries that DevKit Pro provides. Citro 2D and Citro 3D. These two things are the only things you need when it comes to 3DS graphics. So to use them, you must first initialize both of them when loading the game and create render targets for the top and bottom screen. Then during every frame, you can be like, all right, let's start drawing on the top screen. Use a function to draw a square in the middle of the screen. After that, I have to stop drawing on the top screen and boom, a square on the top screen. I swear in Love Potion, this is all just one line of Lua code, so it's like I said, C++ is not for the faint of heart, but I'm already in too deep, so let's keep going. To get the actual paddle to draw on the screen, I made a new function in my paddle class that uses a Citro 2D function to draw a rectangle at the paddle's X and Y position. Now that I have the player working perfectly on the 3DS, I can work on the ball. The ball should be way easier to make than the player since now I have a ton of new knowledge on how to do things. Make a ball class, put all the needed variables inside, have it draw a circle instead of a rectangle, and have it bounce when it hits the screen edges, which I got working first try. For the enemy, I created a new class and actually extended from the player paddle class. Extending means that everything I put into the player paddle will automatically be put inside of the enemy paddle. So all I have to put in the enemy class is just enemy specific things like the paddle automatically moving up and down according to where the ball is. Now, there's just a couple more things I have to do to make this Pong clone actually playable, like have the ball collide with the paddles. For this, I tapped into my prior collision making skills and remembered that all I have to do is make four collision points around each paddle, and if the ball is anywhere inside of the rectangle the collision points make, then the ball will bounce. Then all I had to do was add a score for each paddle and have the ball score when it hits either side. Now, I'm pretty much done, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel polished or even like it's utilizing any of the 3DS's features like the bottom screen. I couldn't just leave it here, so I had to keep going. The first thing I wanted to do was get this debug looking text out of the bottom screen and onto the top screen in a nice clean way. This would turn out to be a pretty hard challenge because they were little examples on how to actually do this. Citro 2D actually has a bunch of functions dedicated to rendering text on the screen, even letting you put any font you want. So first I made a text class containing everything that I needed, then I had to allocate memory for the text in a text buffer, then load the font. Then before you even render anything to the screen, you have to actually parse whatever text you want to put on the screen. I made a pretty nifty function that I can use anywhere in the code to put any text I want on the screen. Then it's just as simple as rendering the text on the screen. This is where I got introduced to the infamous C++ memory leaking because previous iterations of my text code were bad. It's still not great right now, but at least it's not memory leaking, so we move on. Now that the text is removed from the bottom screen, I can't just leave the bottom screen empty. I have to put something on it. So I decided to maybe put in a few images. How hard could it be? There are a couple of ways to render images on the 3DS, and it seems that the recommended way is to have the compiler convert all your images into T3X sprite sheets while compiling the game. For the compiler to actually know what images to convert, you have to make a .t3s file to define every image file. Yeah, it's confusing, I know, I got stuck on that part for quite a few hours. From that point, it's fairly straightforward to render sprites on the screen. You make a new Citro 2D sprite sheet variable for each sprite sheet, load them into memory, draw them whenever you want. I use this to have the bottom screen represent the players playing, changing their emotions when they win or lose. But yeah, after that, it was just a matter of polishing, fixing bugs, and we're done. Pong. Yeah, it's, it's just Pong, but it's my first completed 3DS project, so it's special. Is the code good? Uh, no, since I looked at a bunch of C examples, there's a lot of blatant C code that I could have made into C++ code. The code is very much not clean, and I did this all in one C++ file, which if you ask any C++ developer is 
not good. I'd left the game on overnight one night, and when I woke up, I saw that the game had crashed, so there's probably a memory leak somewhere that crashes the game within 8 hours or something, but even after all of this, I found myself loving C++. I actually came out of this wanting to do more with the language, which is crazy. I don't really know what other games I could try and make, so maybe you could tell me down in the comments below, and while you're down there, maybe hit that subscribe button. <laughs>